I'm Rachel. I'm here with my fabulous co-presenter, Veronica. We are here representing the ABAI Open Educational Resources Special Interest Group. We are absolutely passionate about drawing attention to the need for more OER in our niche discipline. Um, you will notice there are QR codes embedded everywhere in today's presentation because we are limited to 10 minutes. So um, there is also a slide at the end of the presentation, which you might not see during the live session, but you will when you see these slides themselves with more information about our special interest group if you're interested in joining or learning more. So what is our promise to you today? We are going to do these things. Um, in summary, we are going to inspire you, we hope, to consider implementing some of these replicable strategies that involve students in OER creation that draw attention to cultural context and community representation in the process of doing that. Um, so why is this important? Well, um, Veronica and I teach in a very niche discipline. So this is a pre-professional discipline and what we know to be true in our discipline and true of many others is while we're seeing more and more OER adoption in lower division courses, we are not seeing that in these pre-professional disciplines that are resulting in certifications, credentialing, licensure areas, um, which is unfortunate. These are disciplines that are service oriented and people are choosing to go into these and we are seeing more of an barrier to access and equity matters when it comes to OER. So we care about this. So we're hoping to share some strategies with you and what might be one possible solution for that. Absolutely. And while it would be wonderful if the leaders of our field of behavior analysis got together and created open resources, it's still kind of a new concept. So we think that uh, barring that movement, and we are working on that, we think open pedagogy and working with our students to create resources to make the job a little bit easier might be one really good step toward the right direction. Next slide, please. Of course, open pedagogy just refers to this idea that uh, we're creating resources that uh, the student is creating a project. The project itself has value beyond just the learning of the student. The student chooses to make that resource publicly available to benefit others, and the student permits others to contribute, refine, and continue that wonderful work of, of that material they've created by applying an open license. So it really becomes an iterative resource. You can learn more in the seminal article by Wiley and Hilton referenced here and also in our references. Next slide, please. There's a lot of benefits to including students as creators. We know that it's been used many times through a variety of disciplines, everything from simple creation of multiple choice questions by John Giani to larger projects like students involved in creating a peer reviewed journal article or students uh, contributing to the culmination of a curated textbook like with Robin DeRosa. One example that we're very excited about from our field is students as content creators in an undergraduate behavior analysis course by Nava and colleagues, which I'm showing you here on screen. The researchers here had students create an example or demonstrate an example of behavior analysis as a course project in an introductory level behavior analysis course. And you can learn more about that study if you follow the QR code. But some things we took away that are very inspiring, next slide please, is that there's a lot of benefits. First, the materials that were created by students reflected their individual experiences, their voice, including their culture and their identity, which was especially important given that these researchers were teaching at a predominantly um, at a Southern California university that uh, serve students from historically marginalized populations. It also meant that the resources they created were very diverse and that those materials could better reflect not only the creator but the user. We also found in this study that the students preferred the resources created by their colleagues and that they tended to be uh, more culturally responsive, more relevant to the students that they were serving. So we have some current projects that are being done by members of our special interest group that we want to share with you. Um, this first one is a glossary project. So in our discipline, um, Applied Behavior Analysis, we have this task list, this list of objectives, if you will, that our students have to be able to master in order to pass a national board exam when they exit. A lot of terms that students have to be able to master. But what's really fascinating about our discipline is that there's so many applications of those terms, right? So you can see here in the middle of your screen a list of some um, different areas. We're most known in the area of autism and disability, but our applications are vast, animal behavior, parenting, adult relationships, pop culture. And so we've allowed students the 
invited them to have the opportunity to participate in developing an OER where they can come up with examples for each of these terms across those different domains. And so we're putting together with student involvement this glossary where these terms can be either um, they can search for definitions by term or they can search for some definitions specifically within these domains. So if a student is specifically interested in animal behavior, they can look up some of these glossary terms only by looking for animal behavior terms. Or if they want to look up more information about fixed ratio schedules, they can look up all kinds of different examples about fixed ratio schedules across a variety of domains. And you can see here um, one example um, in pop culture with a Star Wars reference, if that's your thing, and a QR code for more information to learn about this project. Um, students have enjoyed the relevance of this, including asking to be able to participate long after the course expectation or course invitation has passed. Um, we have a college softball coach who just graduated um, from our program who really loved the fact that she was able to participate in a project that allowed her the opportunity to come up with examples that were specifically related to sports, nutrition, and fitness, which is her particular passion and expertise related to behavior analytic content. Um, we also have a member of our special interest group who has worked closely with students in developing this matrix, taking that task list that I referenced before and having students identify existing OER and coming up with a way to crosswalk that to the task list so that there's this great resource now where students know what OER are already available to help prepare for that board exam, or maybe somebody's not a student, maybe they're supervising other people who are already working in the field or supervising people who are seeking credentials who can have this resource now as a supervisory resource as well. So pre-professional as well as a post-professional resource. And one project that I've been working on with my students is the Open Behavior Artifacts Project. In this uh, project, I ask junior and senior level undergraduate students to create some content that reflects behavior analysis in lieu of a formal written project. Now, students, of course, are given the option of what project they'd like to do. And for three years running, they've selected creating the open uh, resource uh, as their course project. My hope with this project is to help students not only develop a repertoire of talking about behavior analysis in a way that's really accurate to our field, but also a way that's user friendly, that's approachable to anyone so that they have that kind of dual verbal repertoire that they can use. And with this project, it's very important to me that the student chooses what and how much they want to share. So always the licensing and how the student chooses to share is entirely up to them. Speaking of the student experience, next slide, please. Uh, students have given really favorable feedback. Folks have mentioned that they, they like to give their best effort because they know that the resource is going to go help other people, that uh, they're not just creating an assignment that they know is going to be scored and thrown away. But there are some, some challenges and some pitfalls too. In a related project that I've conducted with a colleague uh, who studies nutritional genomics, her students in follow-up panel discussions have mentioned that they really appreciate the autonomy and the flexibility that they get to choose what and how they're going to present the content and what topic they're going to choose. But it can be really daunting at the beginning, especially for students who perform well, because they're not really sure what to expect. Students also mentioned that they really like being able to learn adjacent skills like video editing, copy editing, things of that sort. And that they especially like these projects because it allows them to learn the content on a deeper level than they would have if they had just uh, completed a, a regular assignment, a written paper, what have you. They don't have to just memorize that content and present it, but they have to find new and novel ways of presenting it to others. We do want to share with you some ethical and procedural considerations. First, getting projects like these off the ground can be pretty daunting. It's a lot of work, so don't go it alone. If you can, find other folks at your university, or if they're not at your university, do what we did, which is connect with folks across okay. your discipline to try to do more. Try to incorporate OER and OEP into what you're already doing, because though it's a labor of love, it can be a lot of work. So it's, it's helpful if you're not increasing the work demand so much. And bearing in mind that it is a labor of love, sometimes it doesn't keep to a schedule and you have to be flexible with what you expect and, and how quickly it goes. Next, bear in mind that when we're talking about student contribution, we have to be respectful and fair and respect that autonomy there. So not only should students be fairly compensated for their work, we shouldn't expect them to create open resources. We shouldn't uh, require that they participate in these projects because at the end of the day, it's about their intellectual property. 
So our last point here is bear in mind that you want to respect the student's autonomy, you want to respect their choice, and you want to make sure that you're doing some work to educate students about what the open licenses mean and what they mean for them, and then respect their choice and how they want to share their resource back with others. Thank you so much for joining us today. Again, we've got more resources if you want to check out our slides. We also have information about our SIG, but if you have any questions at all, we hope you'll reach out. Thank you.